17. Why do the halogens become less volatile as we go down the group? Less volatile is another way of saying higher boiling point. Now, what is holding them together? The molecules holding them together will be the intermolecular attraction force. This increases when we have more electrons, which will be more easily distorted, or the electron cloud more easily distorted. We will have stronger instantaneous and induced dipole. So the more your electrons you have, the stronger your van der Waals forces. Okay, it's nothing to do with the bond energy or bond length. That one is to the energy required to break up the molecule and separate one atom from the other. Here we are talking about separating a molecule from another molecule. 18. Removal of sulfur dioxide using calcium hydroxide. So acidic gas and your alkali will get our salt, calcium sulfite, SO3 and water. And they say initially the emphasis Okay. We'll get calcium sulfite first, which will then become calcium sulfate after longer exposure to atmosphere. But we, were, we are interested in the initial one, which is calcium sulfite. 19. Which reaction is endothermic? You can do this by recollation and elimination. This is Haber process, is exo. This is the combustion, oxidation of sulfur dioxide, is exo. This is hydration of sulfur trioxide, it's a very exothermic reaction. So by elimination, we get the first one, which is the decomposition of hydrogen bromide. You can also rely on your recollection of the group 7 reactions. If you're uncomfortable with remembering, you can check your data booklet on the bond energies for A. Okay, meaning breaking apart two HBr bonds, we will need 366 multiplied by 2, bond breaking endothermic. We form hydrogen bonds and your bromine bonds. And the overall change will be a positive 103 we should also confirm that it's endothermic. Twenty, what happens when this molecule is reacted with coal and hot KMnO4? Coal first, if it's coal, we will have the OH attached across this double bond. We have a diol, one OH here and the other OH here, and the double bond will be gone. So we will have one, two, three OH. This will not be oxidized because the cold conditions will not oxidize the hydroxyl to a ketone. So we have three hydroxyl groups remaining. If it's hot concentrated, if it's hot concentrated, this double bond will be broken, it will be cleave. This OH well, will become a ketone, but they are asking us how many 6 member rings will remain. So the 6 member rings we will have 1 left, this one is broken, so no longer a ring. Two rings left. We do not include this because this is five membered carbon. Five carbons, one, two, three, four, five. So we only have two rings left. Twenty one, which compound will cause the most ozone depletion? We go back to the idea that the ozone depletion is mostly caused by your chlorine radicals. So we look for the one that has the most chlorine atoms. In this case will be A. Right. Fluorine doesn't really contribute to the depletion because the CF bond is 
pretty strong it won't be broken apart so easily to release your F radicals <coughs> Twenty-two. Which one is the ratio of hydrogen to carbon the highest? You can do your general formula and all that, but you can save yourself the trouble by listing out specific examples. Using one carbon as a basis, I have my alcohol, one carbon aldehyde, carboxylic acid, and halogens, and then I see that for my alcohols, I have four hydrogen which is the most among all of them. So the ratio of hydrogen atoms to carbon is the highest for alcohol. Just like that. Twenty three. How do we distinguish Y from Z? That means we will have reactions that will show for one but not the other. Silver nitrate will not have a reaction with Y or Z. Right? The chlorines here that's attached to the benzene ring will not be um, coming out to form a precipitate. Okay, they are very strongly bonded to the benzene. So no reaction for both. For both. Failing solution. Test for your aldehydes. We do not have aldehydes on both so there will be no reaction bo for both also sodium sodium will react with your carboxylic acid here it will also react with your alcohol group here so we will have hydrogen gas for both in this case doesn't work also sodium carbonate sodium carbonate will react with your acid sodium carbonate will not react with your hydroxyl group so we will use sodium carbonate to distinguish. We will get our effervescence, your carbon dioxide will come out. Reaction between sodium hydroxide and bromobutane. So we have a bromobutane here, sodium hydroxide. We have our nucleophile. This is partially positive because bromine is partially negative. So this nucleophile will attack this partial positive carbon and then this bond will be breaking at the same time. Okay, which is described by A. Twenty five. We have ethanol reflux with potassium dichromate so they are saying that they are they want to change this ethanol into ethanoic acid CH3 COOH the organic product was then collected which is ethanoic acid the yield is 75 percent so how can we work this out I'll use the yield if I use 2.76 grams of ethanol they are saying that 75% of it was successfully converted. So I'll try to calculate out the mass of your ethanol converted. So 2.76 at the start, only 75% was successful in conversion. So this is the amount of ethanol converted. This we will convert to the moles of your ethanol that is converted divide by MR one mole of ethanol will produce one mole of ethanoic acid so if I have 0 0.045 moles of ethanol converted I will have 0 0.045 moles of ethanoic acid obtained and then if I want to find a mass I multiply by MR of ethanoic acid 2.7 grams. So find out the moles of ethanol converted equate to the moles of ethanoic acid multiplied by MR.